Ah, the table looks beautiful, Kay. Dare I say, seductively romantic? Thanks, Tabitha. That's just the mood I'm going for. Do I look okay? Oh, yes, yes. You look scarcely scheming. <laughs> Good. The girl should be knocking on the door any minute now, and he's totally bummed. Damn it. You mean because he couldn't stop Charity going skiing with Reese, Jessica, John, and Simone? He already misses Charity, but he won't for long. After those hot and horny herbs kick in that you gave me to put in his appetizers, oh, he won't care where she is or what she's doing, because he's going to be too busy doing me. you were in the library. Well, I was, but I couldn't concentrate, you know? I, um, I was just thinking about my beautiful wife up here in this bedroom all alone. Well, I am trying to get dressed for my appointment with Dr. Culver. Well, the good doctor can wait. I can, OK? <laughs> Honey, I would love to make love to you right now, but I was lucky enough to get an appointment with the doctor. And if I don't leave soon, I will be late. Well, look, the doctor specializes in difficult pregnancies, right? Mm hmm Well, then I think we should do everything we can to make sure that you're pregnant <laughs> by the time you get there. Honey, even if we made love right now, there's no guarantee I that I would mm. be... Mm. Oh, <laughs> oh, you... Okay, Mother, you look a little ashen. Beth! Beth. Beth, please, will you forgive me? Forgive you? For what? For what? For, for keeping you on hold for so long. For not marrying you the second I could and bringing our beautiful family together with me and you and our beautiful baby, Martin. Oh, Luis, of course I'll forgive you. Oh, thank God. Mm. Oh, thank God, because, you know, for a second there, Sheridan was, was boo-hooing and belly aching so much. Damn, she almost convinced me that, that your baby was hers. Uh, the gall of some people. Oh, but now I know. Oh, I know what a whack job she is now. Thank God. Oh, Beth, you are my first love. You are the mother of my child. Not that crazy old Sheridan. <laughs> oh, no. no. She is locked away in that loony bin for good. Oh, Luis. This is a dream come true. I love you. You're listening to me, Missy! If you're gonna go on about more doom and gloom headed my way, I don't want to hear it. Oh, well, suit your sick self. <laughs> don't say it and warn you, though. Because the minute that Luis finds out that you encouraged Antonio to keep Sheridan locked up in that mental ward, Missy, game over. Hmm. And, uh, just how is Luis gonna find out? If Antonio didn't tell him about Alistair urging him to have Sheridan committed, which he didn't, you really think he's gonna tell him about me? Oh, you know what the best part is? Luis has been banned from ever seeing Sheridan. Well, hopefully forever. So once that sinks in and Luis accepts that he's lost Sheridan, he's gonna come knocking on my door looking for that loving feeling. And guess what? I'm gonna give it to him, but good. And once I'm through loving Luis, he's gonna be so weak, he might need your walker to help him stand up. Oh, Maurice, I can't believe that you're really here. All right, but listen to me, okay? Because I may not be able to sneak you out just yet. Look, look, I want you to know 
that I will always be here for you, okay? And we're gonna get through this together, okay? I promise. I believe you, Lois. I, I trust you with my life. Sure, you are my life. I love you so much. I love you too. Holding you. You're so brave to risk a rest just to be here with me. Ah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Being brave had nothing to do with it. I was way too in love with you. <laughs> I love you too. But I never thought we would make love in a psych ward. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I guess we're just crazy in love with each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we must be, because I'm nuts about you. <laughs> Have a hold on. Seriously. All right. All jokes aside, you're not going to be in here much longer, okay? I just need to come up with a plan to get you the hell out of here. I don't know, Luis. Maybe. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe Antonio was right to have me committed. Maybe I really have lost my mind. No, Sheridan, that's crazy, okay? <laughs> Come on. You know what I mean, right? Look, I just wish I was as sure as you are. I look at it from Antonio and everyone else's point of view. They they all think that I'm crazy because I believe some other woman's baby is mine. Even you doubt me. I just, I just think you're confused, okay? No, Louise. I don't just think Beth's baby is mine. In my heart and in my soul, I am sure of it. Boy, it is times like this I wish I knew if your father had insanity in his family. Excuse me? You slept with so many men, you don't even know who my father is. Well, whoever he is, I am certain. And his family tree had a few loose limbs, if you get my drift, because you are downright cuckoo. <laughs> and one of these days, somebody, sometimes, someplace is gonna realize that baby isn't yours, but it's Sheridan's, and then your whole world is gonna blow up in your face. Kaboom! Please give it a rest, Edna. Luis is not gonna find out the truth about me, about the baby, about anything. <laughs> Well, you see, I wouldn't be so sure about that because every time you bring that baby to be nursed by Sheridan, it reinforces their bond with one another. And you know what? <laughs> one of these days, Sheridan's gonna insist on a DNA test, and then you know what? Kaboom! You know what? Sheridan is in the psych ward, so she's not really in any kind of position to demand much of anything. Okay? Maybe a little extra padding on the walls, but she's not even gonna get that. Mm. I'm happy that we can look forward to starting the family again. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. If and when we have another child here, she'll never replace little Sarah. Never. But we would have wanted her to have brothers and sisters. And now, God willing, she will. <laughs> and you've already done your part exceedingly well, as always, I might add. <laughs> you inspire me, Oh, you know? well, if passion counts, honey, I may uh, already be pregnant. <laughs> well, then why would we take any chances with that? Oh, you are so tempting. Uh, honey, I have to go, though. I'm going to uh, be late for my appointment. I have to go. Are you sure? Uh, why do you want to go see a specialist in difficult pregnancies? We haven't been trying again that long. I know. 
but we just we can't be too sure. You know, I got pregnant last time without really trying, and it was after that that things got complicated. And Dr. Abel was great, but uh, he was no match for Teresa. Honey, don't eat. No, I'm you. not. I. Looking back is. Mm. I know, I know. That was then, this is now. I just want to be proactive, not reactive, you know? I agree, I agree. I just. I think you're rushing off to go see Dr. Culver. It's more about your suspicions of Beth than our having a baby. Glenn. No, it's not. Honey, the most important thing to me in the world is getting pregnant again and having a healthy baby. And just, you know, seeing Dr. Culver, it just, it kills two birds with one stone. All right, it helps us have a healthy pregnancy, and it just, you know, I can find out more about Beth's pregnancy. Honey, there is a thing called doctor-patient confidentiality, I don't you know. need to know any specifics. I just need general information to see if Beth's story adds up. S sweetheart, think about what you're saying. How could Beth not have been pregnant? I mean, she was... Uh, Luis admitted that he slept with her. <gasps> Once. <laughs> Once is all it takes. Besides, he went to appointments with her, Lamaze class. I mean, he even talked to Dr. Culver after Beth delivered. Which was at home? How convenient was that, huh? Honey, listen. For your suspicions to be correct, it meant that Beth had to have Sheridan kidnapped. Then she had to have held her captive for months, delivered her baby, and then stole him. It would also mean that Dr. Culver had to be in on the hideous plan and that Mrs. Wallace was lying for Beth the whole time. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> It would have been uh, an incredibly convoluted scheme, layered with uh, deceit and treachery. Do you think Beth is capable of that? I am so stoked to finally be here. I can't wait to hit the slopes. I can't wait to try out my new snowboard and all that fresh powder. <sighs> Shoot, I might take a nap. All this fresh mountain air makes me tired. Mm, it's making me hungry and thirsty, too. Wonder where I could go to get a cup of hot cider around here. Uh, so, Charity, what are you looking forward to doing? Yeah, if you don't want to hit the slopes first, I brought some books. You could go read by the fire. You're sweet. You guys are so sweet to try to make me feel better, but, um, I may not be so fun on this trip. Oh, you miss Miguel, don't you? Yeah. You know, I'm trying to forget that he's not here, but... I love him so much, and, and it's just not the same without him. What's really creepy, you guys, is that the last time we were here, John, you hadn't moved to Harmony yet, but I had this vision that I lost Miguel to Kay. And now I have. Maybe we should have Miguel bring Marie up here so he can get away from Kay and be with Charity. Otherwise, one of these wolves might think she's fair game. Jeepers, creepers, I think one already does. All right, we need to do something about this. Fast. Who's that for? You, Tabs. Only, you won't really stay any with us. Oh, Miss Manners, you're not. Get a clue, which. Okay, I don't want to scare Miguel off before he even eats his appetizers. Mm. Oh, which are chock full of the gotta have it herbs you gave me. Mm, I know, I know. Having me here will make it seem less like the shameless setup it really is. Exactly. Yes, I'll excuse myself at the very last minute on the pretext of tending to Endora, leaving you alone with Mr. Yum Yum. You know, for an old witch, you do catch on quick. Listen. A, in which years I am not that old. And B, can the comments and just focus on catching Mr. Yum Yum. Miguel? Oh. Tabitha and I thought we heard someone. What are you doing out here in the cold? I was just trying to catch Charity before she left for the ski lodge, but I guess she didn't hear me. Oh, don't worry about Charity. She's gonna have a blast skiing and snowboarding. And we're gonna have so much fun with our little girl. Maria's doing so well. You should see her just splashing around in the bath. Really? <laughs> yeah, and she's even started sleeping through the night. Wow, that's great. Yeah. I can't wait to spend all the time I can with her. Well, um, I decided to make some dinner for you and me and Tabitha, so um, I'm gonna go get the appetizers. Uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay.
Hey, Tabitha. Hello, Miguel. I hope you're hungry. Kay's been cooking like a fiend all afternoon. Actually, I'm starving. Moving crates to the cannery all day isn't exactly easy. Here, I made these just for you. Thanks. Oh, um, uh, if you'll excuse me, I think I hear Endora. I'll just go and check on her. Hey, uh, why don't we bring down Maria so she can have dinner with us? Maybe I could feed her some cereal or something. You know, that's that's a great idea, but Maria, she's still napping. But I promise the moment she wakes up, I'll bring her down here so you can feed her. Uh, eat your appetizer before it gets cold. You know, I just can't wait to spend time with my daughter. That's why you're here. Okay, why don't you sit and eat the appetizers, and I'll go get the rest of dinner ready. Miguel, hey, you need to get up here to the ski lodge as soon as you can. Because every single guy here is trying to make time with charity. Especially this one dude. Here, wait. See for yourself. Doubting yourself, okay? <laughs> you are not crazy. I wish I could believe you, Louise. Then believe me. Hey, I'm your soulmate, okay? Well, I know you better than anyone else does, and I'm telling you, you have not lost your mind. You've just been through hell. You need some rest, okay? Aren't you crazy to think you're crazy? <laughs> really? Yes. Look, we just, we just need to get you the hell out of here, okay? Get you place where you can rest, put everything that's happened in perspective, and you are going to be fine, okay? I think you're right. It would do me some good to get away from Harmony. I just wonder how long I have to be locked up in here for. Well, just as long as I can come up with a plan to get you out, okay? And then, hey, guess what? Then we're going to go away together, all right? Just the two of us. No, no, Luis, we can't leave our baby. I mean, little Martin needs me. I'm his mother. Okay. So you're saying you think that Beth concocted a Byzantine plan to steal Sheridan's baby, that she enlisted the help of a well-respected physician to lie for her, and then she got a sweet old lady like her mother and not to mention that, that innocent orangutan to keep quiet all this time? Honey, Mrs. Wallace is not some sweet old lady. Julian said he caught her stealing silver from the mansion one time. <laughs> honey, the woman did have a stroke. I mean, oh, obviously honey, it what, impaired her judgment. Whatever. I don't trust Beth. And, and to think that, that Beth delivered Sheridan's baby all by herself? And where did she keep her prisoner this whole time? I mean, if there is a pit in Beth's basement, like the one Sheridan claimed she was kept in, don't you think Luis would have found it? Look, I know what I'm saying sounds crazy. I mean, besides, no one as, as close to Luis as Beth could pull off something so insane and crazy without Luis catching on, right? Exactly. But, honey, ugh, instinct, a vibe, a twinge, I mean, call it whatever you want, but something is telling me that Beth played a role in what happened to Sheridan and her baby. And I think that Dr. Culver just might have the clue, but I am looking forward to prove it. Nurse, did we ever get a response to the emails we sent Beth Wallace about her outrageous behavior in the office that day? No, Dr. Culver, Ms. Wallace has ignored all our attempts to contact her. What about the man who was with her? The one you said caused such a scene? I'm sorry, Doctor, I still can't remember his name. He was really good looking, though. I'm not paying you to daydream, nurse. <laughs> All right, send another email to Miss Wallace, okay? I want to get to the bottom of whatever she was up to. Claiming to be pregnant when she, when she was wearing a, a pouch of sugar strapped to her belly? Well, you better hope and pray that nothing else happens to make people suspicious, little missy. You shut up. Nobody's gonna find out that Martin isn't my baby. <laughs> oh, never say never, because when you least expect it. <gasps> oh, we got mail. I bet it's for me, because I put out an internet 
personals and, you know, hipster sinks hunt. Hipster, got it? <laughs> yeah, I get it. I'm pretty sure you won't. Oh, oh, Missy. You give me a man a dark room and a six pack and I'll prove you wrong. <laughs> Uh-oh. You got another email from, from that real Dr. Culver's office. What do you mean, another one? Well, look, I, you have three already, you know. I tried to warn you, tried to tell you, that no, you were too busy trying to fool Louisa to thinking that little Martin was your flesh and blood to pay attention. <laughs> oh, yes. See? He wants to know what you were trying to pull in that office that day when that little pouch you were wearing around your belly broke and five pounds of sugar spilled all over the reception room floor. It's none of Dr. Culver's business what I was doing. Well, shucks. The kindly doctor doesn't think so. He thinks you're trying to pull a scam. <sighs> trying to defraud insurance companies with bogus claims for a bogus pregnancy. And he doesn't want you putting his medical license in jeopardy. So he insists that you contact his office right away or he is going to contact the authorities. <laughs> All life. There, Endora. Mummy finally has your baby book up to speed. All the people who visited you and brought gifts have been recorded. Even my precious Timmy. Oh, so much is going on these days. <laughs> And most of it is bad, which, of course, is good for us. Kay's trying very hard to keep Charity and Miguel apart forever. And she's managing to do it without killing Blondie, which is good, because Blondie has my Timmy's heart. And without Blondie's true love, the bootylicious Miguel, to make her a full-fledged woman, she won't come in to her full powers of goodness, which means we won't go the way of eight tracks. Oh, yes, my little one. Things are definitely looking up for us. Of course, Kay, being a mere mortal, could always use some help, and we are the ones to give it to her. She seems to be handling Miguel pretty well. But I think that we should do something to keep Charity Occupado up in ski country. Oh, what could distract a girl who has given up the love of her life to save his child from certain death? I know. A new boy toy. Mm. After Miguel, he'd have to be drop-dead gorgeous for Charity to even take a second look at him. swim trunks. Well, talk about a tiger in his tank. You know, by the time I put together the perfect man for charity, she'll be saying, Miguel who? <laughs> Can't believe charity moved on to someone else so fast. I know that she has every right to, I just didn't think that she would. Maybe that's part of why she left in such a hurry. I still wish I could be at the ski lodge. Tell her again how much I love her. Travel time. Oh, how do you like that new camera phone I gave you? Hope you stay close to Maria when you're away. It's great. Who were you talking to just now? It was Reese. He just called to say that they made it to the ski lodge. He said that you wouldn't worry about Simone and Jessica. Oh, OK. Yeah, I'm gonna go get Maria so she can eat with us. Well, you didn't eat your appetizer, and dinner's gonna get I'll cold. I'll just be a second. Mm -hmm. 
Reese must have called just when Miguel was getting ready to eat the aphrodisiac. Oh, I hope nerd boy didn't get him thinking about charity. Stop playing Cupid, Reese. Hey, I bought this phone so that Miguel could stay in touch with me, not charity. Guess what? Two can play at this game. Come on, Miguel. Just call. Say you're coming up here with Maria. Or at least talk to Charity. He's gonna lose her if he doesn't get his acting gear. And soon. Uh, hey, I'm gonna go soak in the hot tub, all right? No, Charity, wait. Why, <laughs> what's wrong? Wrong? Um, it, well, you know, you could catch a cold. What? Well, we just don't want you to get sick yet while you're here on the trip. Thanks for caring, but I'm gonna be fine. And Mr. Stud McStudley's gonna be making sure she's fine. I thought Jessica would like to see pictures of her niece, Maria, with her daddy, Miguel. Uh-oh. What is it? Nothing. It was just a... What? Come on, Maria. Let's go downstairs and be with Mommy before dinner gets cold. Okay. I was just coming down with Maria. Well, you were gone so long, I was starting to worry. Yeah, um, sorry. You know, Maria's so cute, I just couldn't take my eyes off of her. Guess I lost track of time. That's okay. You and Maria together make such a perfect picture. Luis, we cannot leave Harmony without our baby. All right, now you have to go to Beth and get him from her so that we can take him with us, but you cannot tell Beth where we're going. Otherwise, she'll just try to get our baby back. Not that I blame her, but she can't have him. He is not her child. I'm telling you, Luis, little Martin is ours. I am sure of it. <sighs> Are you sure you want to keep your appointment with Culver? Even though it's doubtful that you're pregnant yet. Sweetheart, there is no harm in meeting the specialist to see if we're a good match for when I am pregnant. Okay? And if Culver can shed any light on Beth's pregnancy that will help Sheridan deal with the maternity of baby Martin, then the sooner we know the better, right? Look, I want to help Sheridan too. I just... I don't want you going off on some wild goose chase and you ending up only disappointed. I won't be, I promise. Now I have to go or I'm going to be late, okay? You want to come with you? No, thank you. I think I'm gonna be able to get more out of the doctor if, uh, if I go along. You be careful, okay? I will be. Relax, okay? I'm just gonna ask Dr. Culver just a few simple questions about Beth. I mean, what harm is there in that? Okay? okay. I love you. Yeah. Love you, too. I'm gonna nip this in the bud right now. What are you gonna do? Torch Dr. Culver's office the way you did Sheridan's cottage? Or invite him over for coffee and capture? <sighs> Doctor's office. This is uh, Beth Wallace calling. I just received an outrageous email from you people accusing me of some sort of criminal intent last time I was in your office. I'll let you speak to Dr. Culver. No, I mean, there is no need. Dr. Culver strongly disagrees. So maybe I spilled a little something in your office a while back. All you had to do was call a damn janitor and have him clean it up. You don't really have to make this a federal case. Dr. Culver finds your behavior odd and the incident highly suspect. Mm hmm okay. Well, why don't you go ahead and tell Dr. Culver to leave me the hell alone or I will sue him and you for harassment. We were trying to get in touch with you for an explanation of what happened, that's all. Oh, and, and, and you can also tell Dr. Culver, after being vilified this way, I will no longer be his patient, so he can just forget that he ever knew me, and I will do the same for you people. Do you understand? Do you understand?
You know, I think Maria's still tired. You're such a natural at being a father. It's like you've been taking care of babies your whole life. Well, you know, I helped Teresa and Luis look after little Paloma when we were kids, so I guess I had a little practice. You know, I am sure I can learn so much from you. And the best part is, is that we're going to be together nonstop the next few days, day and night. So you can teach me. I know I'll need plenty of hands-on help. Young stud has better pecs than our boy with the buns of steel. <laughs> the ideal man that I am conjuring up for charity to take her mind off Miguel has a chiseled body, and though I'm loath to admit it, a good heart. In short, perfect for our little brat. So perfect, in fact, the charity will not be able to resist my creation. <laughs> yes, Indora. Uh, yes, yes, I know. Charity is still in love with Miguel. So I have to concoct a spell that will put lust before love. Yes, that way Charity will be in the mood to make out in no time. <laughs> To something. Hmm? <gasps> oh no! Oh, stop it, Indora! Don't you dare add his picture to the spell I'm conjuring. He's the last person that we want to cozy up with charity. <laughs> and freaks. Here's a plot twist no one saw coming. to share it, but I have to stop doing this. Miguel belongs with Kay and Maria, and I should just forget about him and move on. Yeah, right, like I'm gonna find another guy who's perfect for me. Luis, you think I'm crazy, don't you? Crazy? No, Sharon. Of course I don't. But I do think that you're confused about the baby. I'm just trying to spare me my feelings. Sharon, don't you know that I would give my right arm for what you believe to be true? Our best baby to be our son. It would solve all of our problems. You'd be vindicated. You could walk right out that door. We'd be together. Have our son back. 
sure we'd spend the rest of our lives together. If only that were true. Did you hear me? I said tell Dr. Culver to stop harassing me, or I will take that quack to court. But he was only trying to... Woo! Quite a performance, Bethany. Thank you, Mother. Hmm. No one in their right mind would keep harassing me after that. No one in their right... <laughs> you get the irony in that one, Angels? Hey. Deleted. That's what I think of Culver's stupid letter. Now it's gone. Just like Sheridan, who will live out the rest of her days in the loony bin. Cold-hearted and crazy. Boy, you are a prize, Betty. A booby prize. Look, no one will find out that Martin is Sheridan's baby, especially now without Culver questioning me about what I was doing in his waiting room, pretending to be pregnant. Hi. I'm Gwen Winthrop. I have an appointment with Dr. Culver. What? Winthrop. Oh, right. Wait. You said on the phone you're a friend of Beth Wallace's, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, I did. Beth's a patient of Dr. Culver, right? She was. She was? What happened? Ms. Wallace recently informed us she no longer wants to be in Dr. Culver's care. Really? In fact, Beth Wallace is the reason I almost quit nursing. Is that a fact? You'd better believe it, honey. Huh. Would you mind telling me what happened? Not at all. I'll tell you all about Beth Wallace. She isn't as sweet as people think. I knew it. Beth is not the saint she pretends to be. And if she is the sinner I think she is, Sheridan may not be crazy after all. How could you have thought that Charity would ever give up Miguel to be with Reese? You really look incredible. You were just about to tell me about Beth Wallace. When Winter has got to die. 